Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Pardon my voice, it's a little gravelly. I woke up with burning sinuses and a, a, a sore throat today. Yay. Um, we're going to have a look at the Penovo PS305 budget uh, power supply. Now this is a bench power supply uh, with current limiting and voltage adjustment, constant current, constant voltage, meaning you can uh, limit it to only providing a set amount of current as well as control the amount of voltage it's producing. And it'll produce uh, up to 30 volts at up to 5 amps, which would be 150 watts, so that's kind of impressive. Um, now this is a low-end supply as far as cost. Uh, it's for um, those that are operating within a budget. Uh, it's, it's not going to be uh, all the bells and whistles features and, and uh, everything of a, a lab quality supply, but for a hobbyist, uh, a ham who just needs a bench supply, I think it fits the bill. Uh, you can buy it on Amazon. Uh, I think it's around $59 now. Somebody on eBay was selling it for $86. I don't think he's going to sell too many. <laughs> but uh, anyway, let's open the box and see what we've got in here. And while I'm doing that, here's the uh, specifications on the label on the side. And uh, they're fair. They're, they're not bad at all. Uh, they uh, allow for just a little bit of error, but uh, that's okay. It's, uh, well, anyway. In the box, we have an IEC power cord. A single folded piece of paper manual. It's, uh, uh, it looks uh, it looks pretty. I'll, I'll take a picture of this and I'll show you the uh, show you the manual and the unit itself. Looks like we get a little power cord with banana plugs and alligator clips and the unit. Now this is very really really light. It's a switch mode power supply, probably a buck converter. Uh, which means it's going to be a little noisy um, for RF applications like working on small receivers. Uh, you probably would not want to use this or maybe filter it. But uh, for just average bench supply for projects, it looks pretty good. So we'll take some close-ups here. On the back, we have uh, your regular old IEC connector, a switch for 120 or 220 volts, 110 or 220 volts, and a fan. On the front, we have our controls for uh, voltage, coarse and fine adjustment, and current, coarse and fine adjustment. We also have, as you'd expect on a bench supply, a floating ground capability. The uh, black and the red are your power supply, and then the green is the chassis ground. So you could uh, use this to provide a negative voltage by putting the ground on the positive and using the black as your supply. Um, or if you want to ground it uh, for use with other equipment on the bench, then you would tie the black and the green together. And then we've got a power switch. And up in the display, we have, I know that they are big, bright LED segments, which I like. So, looks like a nice little supply. It's not very big. Fit on a bench, wouldn't take much room. Let's take it down to the bench and let's put it through its paces. All right, we've got her down on the bench and I've got it hooked up. Got the fluke on it, and as you can see, voltage seems pretty uh, pretty accurate on the front panel display. I like the big red LED displays. Let's uh, take her on up, see how high it goes. 31.6, and the fluke's showing 31.58. So that's pretty good. That's that's pretty close on that meter. Um, how far down can it go? Four, two, one volt, 0.9, reading 0 0.939, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, right down to zero. So can we get to 0 0.1 volts? Well, there's 0.2 on the fluke, and this meter hasn't indicated yet, but I'll cut it a little slack. I mean, this isn't a $1,000 piece of lab gear after all. This is a hobbyist uh, bench supply. All right, so our meters are pretty accurate. I'll put the fine up in the middle. 
and uh, we'll take her up to 12 volts. 12.03 here, 12.0 there. This has only got one digit past the voltage. If it had another digit, we'd probably see, you know, something closer. All right, so uh, what about current? Well, I need a load, so let's, uh, I've got my power resistor load here, and I've got a fan that uh, I can cool them with when they get hot, but let's, uh, let's hook this in. Okay, the power supply's fan kicked in right away, and you can see the constant current light came up because what it's doing is it's limiting current based on our, uh, our input here on the current adjustment. So, meter came out. Right, hold on. There we go. All right. 8 volts there, 7.7 .7 on the fluke. Um, that's within the error. Is that voltage just? Oh, I can't push the voltage any higher because it's limiting current. Let's go ahead and uh, bring that up. About 3.6 amps on this resistor bank. And then we switched back to constant voltage. All right, so the error on the meter increases slightly when we go to load. Um, 11.7 on the fluke, 12.1 on this meter. Now that could just be the resistive drop on the, uh, on the wires. Let me bring the fluke over and we'll measure at the output on the meter. 12.03 on the fluke, 12.1 on the meter. So that's just going to be a little bit of drop on the internal wire resistance inside the unit. So that's pretty good. Our voltage indicator here is close enough for horseshoes and hand grenades when you're looking at what the output is on the front of the unit. Now my resistor bank is, yeah, that's not warming up too bad. Let's go ahead and let's crank her on up. I might have to turn the fan on here because I'm going to hit 150 watts when I get this, uh, if this gets up to 30 volts. Oh, went back to constant current. Of course, we're at 5.2 amps. So we've hit the current limit of the supply. And uh, it's doing just fine. All right. That's good. It's reaching its limited, its uh, current rated output. Fan's running on the back. I don't feel any heat coming off the supply yet. I've got a BK Precision uh, bench supply back here. You can see it. It's old. It's got analog meters and it's linear. And uh, uh, even, even though it's rated at 3 amps with the uh, heat sink on the back, at two amps for any period of time, it gets pretty darn hot. And the fan on the back of this is still blowing cold air. So this little guy is holding up at 5.2 amps, pushing us 17.2 uh, volts. And uh, yeah, 17.1 on the fluke. So that's looking pretty good. All right, what about What about the accuracy of the current meter? All right, let's put the fluke into current mode, 10 amp scale. Okay, our fluke is in line, 300 and 400 milliamps, 390, 380. And it looks like the fluke is tracking with that just fine. Let's bring the voltage up. 0.52 here, 0.51 there, we're pretty close. Oh, it's current limiting, ha, ha, ha. 1.34, 1.33. 2.36, That's pretty close. And there we, oh, increase the voltage. There, 5.2 amps, 5.25. So it looks like the meters on the power supply are pretty accurate and it's uh, got a nice steady output and it's doing its full five amps of output just like you, it's, uh, it's supposed to. So that's looking real good. Um, the fan is not very noisy. Uh, I don't have a decibel meter, but I can hear it running, but it's not annoying. And uh, it looks like it just uh, 
comes on. Yeah, okay, the fan is um, acceleration controlled. It just dropped to about half speed. And there it dropped down again. And there I can barely hear it running at 500 milliamps. So they're, uh, they're doing good with the fan. I like the fact that it's acceleration controlled. It makes for a quieter environment. So functionally, it looks like it's a decent little supply. I saw another review video online uh, where he measured overshoot with an oscilloscope and he found that the overshoot was just a little bit out of spec. Now what overshoot is, it means if you turn the supply on when it's under load. So if I set this to, let's get her up to where we're feeding 12 volts here. Um, at 3.3 amps. Uh, if I had the load connected when I turned it on, overshoot means the voltage is going to spike above the set voltage and then drop back to the regulated voltage. And the other video I saw, he measured overshoot at 12 volts with a load on it at about uh, almost a full volt that it shot over and then came back down. So you would not want to connect this to sensitive electronics and then turn it on. You'd want to turn it on first and then connect your, your electronics. So that's something to consider. But like I said, this is not lab equipment. This is not uh, a sigillant or you know, some high-end piece of equipment. Um, this is a budget power supply. If you're, if you're constrained on a budget, this looks like it's a pretty good, uh, good little power supply. Well, only one thing left to do. Let's take it apart and see how it looks on the inside. Looks like we have four screws on each side. Well, it's a nice clean PC board. Here's our uh, our DC path up here, you can see these big thick traces up here. This is going to be the AC coming in and yeah, okay, this will be an interconnection to the meters and stuff. And there we are. Okay, it's a buck mode, uh, switch mode power supply. This is going to be the diode and MOSFET up here. We just had it under load and the uh, heat sinks are nice and cool so it looks like they have more than adequate heat sinking in there. It could probably deliver its 5 amps at, uh, uh, for quite a while, maybe indefinitely. Um, our power socket, okay, the fuse, the fuse is in the power socket. This bottom clips off the little compartment there, the fuse is going to be in there. And we've got some electronics on the front board here for the uh, metering. That's going to be the module that does all that regulation for the metering circuitry. It's got that nice new smell to it. The capacitors are Chen, C-H-E-N-O-X, Cheno, Chenox. <laughs> Uh, filter capacitors down here. The AC comes in. It's rectified. There's a bridge right there. And uh, filtered. Filtered again. And then off into the uh, buck mode converter. So pretty straightforward design. Um, we got a ground wire to the chassis as we should have. One thing they did not include with this is the metal blade here um, to marry the ground of the power supply to the chassis ground. Uh, if you're working on certain electronics, um, sometimes it is very useful to avoid an earth ground or a chassis ground to your electronics. Um, if you're going to be measuring things with your scope that's on your earth ground, uh, you're going to want to make sure that you have a, a wire in here joining these two. Without those two joined, there will be, just because of the capacitors, the filter capacitors, there will be a parasitic voltage. AC voltage from the from the uh, ground pin to the earth ground. I didn't. I measured it when I first turned it on, and it was about 40 volts AC. Uh, no current, obviously, because it's just going through a 
through uh, capacitors. But it is a floating ground if you do not have a blade in here. So uh, I'll probably make a wire or solder a couple of ground clips together, make my own blade. Uh, but if you're going to be working uh, with, a, with an oscilloscope, making measurements, you would definitely want to join the power supply's ground to the earth ground to eliminate that parasitic voltage that will be coming across. And that's the way you'd probably use the power supply most of the time so that uh, you don't have any uh, interference with, other, with your other equipment that you're using with your circuit. So uh, they probably should have included a blade. Um, but, you know, hey, it's, it's a budget power supply. I'll, I'll cut them a little slack on that. And it's, it's not a big deal to make your own. Um, internally, uh, everything's nice and clean. There's some fan wires floating, but that's all right. Uh, one thing I don't like, which is just me being persnickety, but the AC coming in here, these are bare uh, connectors. There's no shielding over them. And I might actually put some heat shrink uh, over those just to shield them. Same on the front where they come up to the power switch. Uh, the blades are not shielded. They're open. So, But that's just switching the hot. So if that shorted, it would just turn the supply on. But still, uh, there's a screw down there so your hot's real close. You know, a eh, quarter of an inch away from that screw. These really should be shielded. So I'll probably make that modification. Um, on the front, we have little adjuster pots here for the voltage and current uh, meters, so they can be dialed in even closer if they're not close enough. On this one, they're pretty pretty darn close, so I'll leave those alone. So, uh, you know, overall, it's a nice clean design. Um, I don't see any glaring issues in here. So, the Pavono PS305, what's my conclusions on this? For a hobbyist... Um, maybe a ham that just wants a bench supply for tinkering with projects and such. Uh, it's a decent little supply. I'd recommend it. Um, it's certainly affordable at $59 uh, or 60, you know, 59.95, whatever it is on Amazon. Um, definitely affordable for those of us that are constrained by a budget. Uh, nice and small. It looks clean. The uh, nice big red LED, um, Indicators are really nice. I like digital um, indicators for things like power supplies. Uh, you get a little more accuracy that way. Um, the floating ground option is, uh, is good. If you were using it to provide a negative voltage, you could unmarry that. They should have included a blade to bridge those, but you can bridge it with just a piece of wire there, which I'll do uh, shortly. Overall, I think it's, an, it's, a, it's a good little power supply uh, for the low end, for the hobbyists and the uh, experimenters. A good little bench supply. Um, with radio, the only thing you'd have to think about is it is a buck mode switching power supply, so it's going to be generating some hash noise. Um, if you're working with uh, sensitive RF receivers and such, you'd have to take that into account. You'd have some interference in certain areas of the spectrum. Really a minor problem. Uh, not going to come into play very often. You'd have to be tuned to just the right spot. The uh, manual is uh, decent. The uh, language is, uh, is good. They, they've done their English translations well. Um, it's a very, fairly simple manual, but, you know, there's not really a lot to say. Turn it on, adjust this, you know. <laughs> and they've got some notes there on the grounding. But hey, you know, how much of a manual do you need for a power supply? We all know how to operate a power supply. All right, so anyway, um, I think it's a winner. I think it's a, it's a decent little supply for the price. Uh, you, you definitely can't beat it for the price. Um, it's, it's, there's, there's a lot of low-end supplies in that range. Uh, this, one, this one looks great. Uh, build quality is nice. Looks good. Good display. Seems to deliver what they say it's going to deliver. Uh, watch out for overshoot, you know, don't hook up sensitive stuff and then turn the supply on, turn the supply on and then hook up sensitive stuff. Other than that, um, I really can't find much else negative to say about it. Um, I think it's a winner. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.